Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. It's time to do a full review on the Huawei MateBook X, the first laptop I have used from Huawei. Now this device just launched in the US today actually. I will link to it down below. And it actually came in two models. So first of all you have a 7th gen i5-7200U processor with eight gigabytes of RAM, a 256 gigabyte SSD, and uh, that will be space gray. And that's going to come in at about $1,100 for you. And then the second higher up uh, model would be the 7th gen i7-7500U processor with eight gigabytes of RAM, 520, 512 gig SSD and the color that I have right here, which is the prestige gold and that's going to run you 1300 so definitely not in the budget market They are out to make premium top tier laptops uh, And it seems like that's what they've done right here. Let's go ahead and get into the full review So as usual, let's begin with the one-handed test and that is lifting it on up with one hand which is doable I find that the bottom lifts up just a little bit which is totally fine because of how light it is. It's kind of expected to happen. It is actually 2.3 pounds. It's crazy light. It is a little bit over 12 millimeters thick as well. So not only is it really light, it's also very thin. Taking a close look at the design on the left side, you'll see a little LED indicator to let you know when you're charging. Uh, you do have a battery icon because the left USB-C port is the only one you can use to charge. It's a little bit of a bummer. I've had times when the cord, I'd much rather have it be on the right side, but it is what it is. You have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Moving along, nothing else. You'll see a little indent, so it's easier to put your thumb and lift up the screen. And then on the right side is just a single USB Type-C slot. And at the bottom you have four rubber grips which help keep it still when it is on the table. And also the back two are a little bit more raised than the front two to give it a little more of a tilt when you have it sitting on a table or desk. And of course with this size you do only get the two ports which is a bit of a bummer. You'd like to see more. Uh, you do have to sacrifice the ports to get how thin it is. However, luckily Huawei does include the Mate Dock 2 which is a USB Type-C port which you can connect to your MateBook X, and then you'll see you have your USB Type-A slot right there, you have HDMI out, VGA out, and another USB Type-C port, so you don't sacrifice this port when you put it in the dock. When you do open that lid, you are greeted with the trackpad, keyboard, power button in the upper right-hand corner, which also couples as a fingerprint scanner, and then also dual speakers, which are fantastic. I can't say enough good things about it, considering the size of this laptop. Huawei has integrated a Dolby Atmos sound system into these speakers. I'll test them out in just a sec. The MatePook X has a 13-inch 1440p 2K IPS display protected with Gorilla Glass. It also uses a 3 to 2 aspect ratio, so it's better for kind of taller content if you're reading a document, scrolling on a website, as opposed to more wider content such as video. On the left and right, uh, the bezel size is tiny. It has a 4.4 millimeter bezel size and it's just crazy to look at. I really do like the aesthetics of it. And just overall the display is very good as well. I found that I had to turn off adaptive brightness because inside it didn't tune it up bright enough just for me, but after I turned off adaptive brightness, I could get it just as bright as needed. Even when outside, I could still see the display at max brightness. The MateBook comes with a display manager, so you can turn on eye comfort mode if you'd like to. Uh, which makes for less strain on your eyes. And then, of course, you can actually change your color temperature to, any, uh, to a little more cooler or warmer as well, however you actually like the display, which is always nice to be able to customize it to your liking. Next, I'd like to talk about that power button and how great it is to have that fingerprint scanner actually integrated in it. Now, to give you a test, I'm going to go ahead and let this uh, laptop go to sleep. And once it's asleep, I'm going to lift it on up, and you can just see how quickly it wakes up from sleep mode. And then you, you can just tap your finger down, lift it up, and it recognizes it. It's extremely quick, extremely accurate as well. Now also if your laptop is completely shut down or in sleep mode with the screen off as well, you can actually just press the power button to wake it or turn it on, and it reads your fingerprint scanner as you do that. So I'm gonna press it, let go, and you'll see it will log in for me, and that is because I it actually scanned my fingerprint when I pressed the button, so really awesome implementation. This has been a great laptop for portability, and it should be with how light and how thin it is. I've taken it on various trips with me, I've taken it to a waiting room with me, coffee shops. Uh, it's so easy to just slide into a backpack 
or even just carry along with you just because it's so light. The Matebook X has a chiclet keyboard with 1.2 millimeters of travel. And I find that it is a very compact keyboard, but it isn't cramped by any means. I found it uh, very comfortable. I could use it for longer periods of time. And it was very easy to get used to as well. Typing on it was very comfortable. Uh, kind of a soft touch feel to them. So uh, it, it was very easy to get used to. You also notice kind of a downside that in the bottom right hand corner, the up and down arrows kind of got split in half. A little bit of a bummer. You probably won't be doing too much gaming though. So no big deal. And then the bottom left hand corner, the function button, something that I uh, kind of like is that when you press the function button, it has a little LED light indicator to actually switch. So you can use F1, F2, F3, or just the actual functions up at the top, such as uh, changing the brightness, your volume, uh, Wi-Fi on and off, all that good stuff. Also worth noting, there's backlighting to the keyboard. You'll see off, first setting, second setting, and off again. Now, uh, this isn't as great as I would like. The backlighting could definitely be better. Next up is that trackpad, and of course, with a smaller chassis, you have a smaller trackpad. I wish it was just a little bit wider, personally. However, it is... It is definitely very accurate. It's comfortable to press. Uh, I found it very responsive. It was easy to tell if I had pressed the trackpad or not. Uh, of course, on the right side's a right click, left side's a left click. That is uh, pretty much a Windows standard. And it does have, it is a precision touchpad, so it does have those Windows gestures as well. Now, I'd also like to do a quick audio test with the keyboard and trackpad as well. I may bump up the decibels if necessary. We'll start with the keyboard. All right, now let's move on to the trackpad as well. And there's also some Dolby software as well to go with those great speakers. So you'll see Dolby Atmos sound system has an equalizer. It has custom set ones, dynamic, movie, music, game, voice and then personalize so you can personalize your equalizer as well and it does get really loud and it's very clear as well when you have it all the way up i'm going to play a royalty free song so here's a quick test i uh, i have a music song just a quick test i have a song loaded up just so you can see it does get very loud i'm going to turn it all the way up notice the icon in the bottom right And I have been nothing but happy with these speakers. Uh, they really do the trick in terms of how loud they get. I mean, considering that this is only a 13 inch laptop, I've been very impressed. In terms of battery life, I get around seven, seven and a half hours of daily usage. That will vary depending on how much you use the device. But just overall from around day to day, seven, seven and a half hours, which can get me through a work day. Uh, sometimes I would have to plug it in. Uh, one really good thing about that is that the charger is very small. It's not a huge power brick by any means. USB Type-C charging slot as well. Uh, so yes, I do wish battery life was a little bit better, but it is nice the charger uh, is fairly small. The Matebook X has a whopping one megapixel webcam up at the top there next to an LED light. Uh, and it pretty much speaks for itself. One megapixel camera, don't expect a lot out of it. And then you'll see when I jump into settings it has uh, up to 720p 30 frames per second video recording and of course in terms of software it does run windows 10 i really don't want to go too into uh, just windows in general uh, however it does come with a couple things of software like i mentioned that display software earlier it does have matebook manager right here which kind of helps with some various things such as power management, driver management installed. It actually recently installed the latest graphics driver for me, uh, and it checks for updates on that. Uh, power management, as you can see, your system configuration. So you'll see I have the Core i7, 8 gigs of RAM, and lets you know the size of your hard disk as well. And this is where you set up your fingerprint and that function key as well. Finally, they have a backup and restore, and then it's also useful if you have a Huawei phone. 
Uh, you have instant online to use the data from your phone on your laptop and also Huawei Share. So if you have another Huawei device, you can share files back and forth from your MateBook X. Let's move on to some performance and specs. And I do have the i7 model coupled with eight gigabytes of RAM as well with that 512 gig SSD along with the Intel HD 620. Now overall I would say this laptop is not optimal for gaming or video editing and that's really not what it's made for. Uh, it's definitely made for more portability and being compact. You can do some light gaming yes and potentially some light video editing as well but don't expect to be using it every day to edit all your videos. That'd be pretty frustrating, at least for me. And I was worried at first about overheating because this has no fans. It uses that uh, i7 processor, which is made for Ultrabooks. However, I was still a little nervous. They have a space, Huawei has a space cooling technology that they use and it works very well. I find that the bottom middle gets warm, but never overheating. So uh, the software does a good job or at uh, throttling the, the processor if needed. And overall, I really don't see any drops in performance while that's happening as well. In terms of daily use, it's handled pretty much everything I've thrown at it, having tons of tabs open in Chrome, uh, working on some Word documents, and just other random things as well. So I've been very pleased with the performance. Uh, you will not be disappointed. I just wanna give some final thoughts, and this has been my new favorite laptop to take with me wherever I'm going. It's extremely powerful, uh, extremely portable as well. The size just makes it great a great companion to bring with you. Uh, yes, the price tag is a little bit steep, but Huawei is hitting that uh, higher end market, so you're going to have to expect a higher end price as well. But anyways, that's pretty much it. Everything I wanted to cover. Go ahead and drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Click that subscribe button as well. Lots more to come. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching.